here, there is an important distinction. I'm not talking about the difference between the true solution and your numerical solution. Okay. That error, the, the error we are making our solution is actually what we care about, right? We care about when we solve the equation like that, how much error is there in that solution? We actually, I mean, who cares about how much error we are making in approximating the derivatives? I mean, like you care about, but like you, because you care about the error in the solution, right? So the next question is, if I have an accurate approximation to the derivatives, does it naturally lead to an accurate approximation in the final solution? Who thinks there is a relationship between that? Oh my god, many people think there is a, a relationship <laughs> between that. Okay, uh, that's, that's, that's actually what I said is true. There is a relationship between the approximation error or discretization error and the solution error. But it is not a sufficient condition to have a small approximation error. Okay. It's almost like a, oh, I shouldn't say it's a necessary condition because by maybe by coincidence you can get a small solution error. But like a, a, you need something else. You need more than an accurate approximation to get an accurate solution. What is that missing ingredient? Yes. Stability. Stability, Stability is very important. And... Uh, it is actually the, so if you remember like when we said n equal to 1000, it takes forever for MATLAB to solve it. The reason is actually stability. So, so ODE45, it tries to figure out the time step so that the solution is accurate and stable. It turns out if we have a big N, you need tiny time steps to be stable. Okay, if you use <coughs> explicit schemes. So let's, let's, let, let's show that. And if you are unstable, if you, you are, your solution is not stable, you can have a small error in the approximation, but a huge error in the solution. Okay, so for example, if we have this scheme and we integrate the solution, not using OD45, but by ourselves, let's try that. Okay, so, so uh, what kind of a time integration scheme, what, what is the simplest time integration scheme you, you are familiar with? OLA, right, forward OLA. Forward OLA, um, forward OLA simply says that if we have a discrete equation, dui dt, well, let's just uh, write it down as a vector form. So uh, du dt is equal to au plus b, right? We are going to, let's say, use a um, superscript to denote the time step, n plus 1 minus un divided by delta t, uh, delta t, sorry, is equal to a times un plus b. So that's forward order discretization, right? So, so to, to implement it in MATLAB, we just uh, set un plus 1 is equal to un plus delta t times a of un plus b, right? So that's how we do forward order. So let's try that. Let's try that, for example, uh, with a delta t equal to, you propose. We still have n equal to 100. 0 0.1? Okay, let's try that. All right, and uh, so we are going to set our u equal to u0 for now, okay? And uh, if dt is equal to 0 0.1, let's say for n is equal to 1 to 1 minus uh, 1 over dt, so we'll iterate till time is equal to 1. We are going to set u is equal to u plus dt times, uh, I think we, are, we, we have a kappa here, right? So uh, we have a kappa here, we have a kappa here, and we have a kappa here, okay? So uh, dt times kappa times a times u uh, plus b, right? Okay, done, very fast. 
let's plot uh, this. <coughs> What do you see? It's very different from the solution we got before, right? So we are making pretty accurate approximations, but our solution goes to 2000 as opposed to stay between zero and one. Let's decrease the time step size 0.01. Let's try this again. <coughs> Copy this is zero plot. It's even worse. Ten to the fifty-four. Let's decrease again. Let's try this this again. Valid selection. Now we get a pretty good solution. Okay. So it's almost like suddenly, right, uh, there is a delta t that once we are lower than that, we get a pretty good solution. And uh, if delta t is too big, the solution just blows up, 10 to the 54. Okay. So that means having an accurate approximation doesn't automatically lead to a good solution, right? Uh, dt equal to point oh one. I don't. I forgot. Uh, so let's try this again. Do, 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 do. Evaluate. Yeah, that's what it is. So how come it's higher than two thousand? So how come it's the error is higher than we have um, point one? Yeah, it's higher than when we had point one. <laughs> but then it decreased again. Yes. <laughs> That uh, doesn't make sense in the beginning, right? <laughs> I mean, if you if you if you if you think about it, it does make some sense. I, I I'm going to I'm going to talk uh, through the math of this. Okay, so the the answer is accurate approximation doesn't lead to an accurate solution automatically. You need stability. So why stability is important? 